Those basic sedimentary forces we've already talked about, sediments accumulating over time and developing profiles, give us the basis for the most simple or straightforward kind of dating that we have available to us. For example, if we are excavating a site, and within that site, we're able to identify a set of distinctive layers. Now, we might be able to identify these on the basis of the kind of soils that are present, what's contained within those soils, the various other properties of color or how those cells were set down, but we can identify a set of sequences and identify a specific set of soils. Now, we might be able to compare those to what we find at a different location. At a different location, it's possible that some of these sediments are available, but others are absent. Now, it's possible that as we look at a different location, we might not find all of the same soil layers present. It's also possible the order of those layers have been reversed or switched by other kinds of sedimentary or erosional forces. Nevertheless, if we properly identify those soils, we can still correlate their presence across these different locations. This will allow us to develop a relative sequence of younger versus older sediments. This process, known as geochronology, allows us to correlate the age of different sedimentary layers across locations, particularly where we have very distinctive sedimentary layers, such as volcanic ash falls, that we can date very clearly or identify very clearly based on their properties. Already back in the 19th century, geologists had a pretty good understanding of the relative history of the planet based on these kinds of simple correlating across different localities, these basic kinds of techniques. Now it might be that we're not just using what's uh, the soils themselves to identify these sequences, but rather what kind of fossils are contained within these soils. For example, we might find that within a given layer, we have specific fossils that we find across different locations. We can use the same basic process then to identify relative chronological sequences of specific categories of fossils. This is what we refer to as biochronology. Now ideally, we don't want to rely on these kinds of relative dating techniques solely, as they can lend themselves to circularity in our arguments, and ultimately we want an absolute date to root these in, but both correlating across different fossil specimens, especially key identifying fossil specimens that are across a limited range of time, or identifying across specific soil sequences, and again, ideally those that are very specific that we can identify very clearly, allows us to get a relative sense of specific fossil time periods and the relative order of younger to older sequences. There are other relative dating techniques available to us that take advantage of different kinds of properties. For example, throughout the Earth's history, the polarity, the magnetic polarity of the planet has actually shifted at various times. So if you were to look at a compass today, you would expect that compass needle to point north, reflecting the current magnetic polarity of the planet. But actually at various times in the past, and especially actually throughout the time period in which we're interested in human fossils, the polarity of the Earth has shifted so that at various times in the past, if you were on the planet and you pulled out a compass, the needle of that compass might have pointed to the South Pole as opposed to the North Pole. We can take advantage of this because this property, the polarity of the Earth, is actually preserved within certain kinds of rocks especially rocks that were superheated and then cooled down relatively quickly, such as those coming out of volcanic sediments, and that have since been buried basically beneath the Earth's surface. Those kind of materials can preserve actually the magnetic polarity of the time that they were formed. So by looking at those kinds of sediments, determining the magnetic polarity of them, we might determine whether we're in periods of normal magnetic polarity or reverse magnetic polarity. This might help us figure out when in the context of, say, the last several million years, we fall. So paleomagnetism is an important relative dating technique we can use to identify across time within a sequence, especially a sequence that spans several of these reversal or normal polarity events.